Oh, well, that's going really easily. Oysters are a delightful party trick. They're tasty, they don't need much, they stand up on their own. They're kind of romantic, they're fun, they're a little bit risky for some people to eat, and they're just downright delicious. If you want to bring something to a party that's easy to do, you don't want to have to do any cooking, grab a bag of oysters, bring them down, shuck them for people with lemons and hot sauce, you'll be the hit of the party. Today I'm going to show you how to do it. Shucking an oyster is not difficult, but there are some things you need to know to do a good job. When you're buying oysters, try to find a supplier or a purveyor of oysters who's getting them directly from the people growing them. You're gonna get the most flavor out of an oyster that way. You don't want an oyster that sat in a big fish tank for a long time. I mean, they'll be fresh, they'll be fine, but that tank's gonna rinse off a lot of their flavor, a lot of the nuance that comes from, you know, the little bay that they were grown in. If you get them from a good supplier, they'll tell you more about them. One of the key things to know is whether your oyster's from an east coast or a west coast. Here in North America, east coast oysters, they're a lot easier to open because they're a smaller, thinner oyster. West coast oysters, with the warm waters grow much bigger and can be a little bit more challenging to break into. Today I'm gonna to go through a few different oyster knives, how to use them, and how to open an oyster cleanly, easily, and safely. Let's talk about oyster anatomy. First of all, this is the top of the oyster, where it's flat. This is the bottom of the oyster, where it's cupped. When you store them, you wanna store them with the cup side down, because that's where the oyster is sitting. This is like the lid and this will allow the oyster to stay fresh for a longer time because the liquid that's inside is not gonna leak out. Now when we shuck it, we also wanna come at it this way because we're looking for this spot right here. This is called the hinge, and this is where we're going to put the knife in, and we're gonna twist it to get underneath the shell and pop it open. Then we're gonna cut the top off and loosen the oyster from the bottom. That's it, let me show you. Now, the best way to do this safely is to hold the oyster in a towel or to put the oyster down on a cutting board with a towel on top of it. And that's gonna protect you from slipping and jamming the knife into your hand, which I can show you. I have two spots where I've done that. It's horrible, and it was because the knife was dull. Now, I'm gonna do it without the cloth so you can see what's going on. So, you wanna take this tip of the knife and find this little hinge here. I slide this one in pretty easily, and now I'm gonna twist the knife like I'm revving a motorcycle. That pops the shell off. Now I slide the knife forwards and I'm gonna run it in along underneath the shell. Right about here is where the oyster attaches to the top of the shell. Now this little edge here is a little bit thinner, like a knife, so that's what I'm using to try and detach the oyster. Once I open it, I wanna make sure I get rid of any little bits of shells that are around the inside here. So I can just move them away with my finger. There might be little bits of shell left on your knife too, so you can wipe it off on a towel. Now you take the fine tip of the knife and you go in to where the muscle attaches the oyster to the bottom shell and gently remove it. Slide the oyster around, just make sure it's detached and whoever eats it can slurp it down without having to try and peel it off the shell with their teeth. That's it, that's all you gotta do. Let's do that a couple more times. Now, not every oyster is the same. We take a look here, we can see this is the spot where we wanna get that knife in. This one kinda of drops down a bit though. This oyster has a really small spot, so that's gonna be a little tricky too, and it looks like the shell might be a little bit flaky, which is an added level of complexity. Now this one here is gonna be great. Look how deep that slot is. It's gonna be really easy to get a little bit of the tip of the knife in there and give me some purchase when I'm trying to pop the shell off the top. Now this little guy, is commonly known in the oyster shucking biz as a downward facing oyster. It's not gonna be that difficult because I'm gonna get it in here, but what you want is to be able to get a bit of purchase on that shell so you can get in there, right? So you can see I've got a good little bit of the tip of the oyster in here. Oh, it's flaking a little bit. So I'm gonna push the knife in towards the oyster a little bit, but not so much that I want it to be jamming through because you don't want the tip of the knife going into the oyster. So I just get enough that I can pop the shell off. So I've got it open. Now I'm gonna take the sharp side and just lift it up a bit. And that's gonna give me enough space to slide the knife through and detach the upper shell. Wipe the knife off, do a little sweep around with your thumb, get any little bits of shell. Lift it up at the back, 
get yourself underneath, and then go in and pull the oyster out. Now you see I flipped the oyster. It's always going to look nice if you do that. But you will be disqualified if you're in an oyster shucking competition for flipping your oyster. Why? Because it will show, it will hide if you stab the oyster. And stabbing the oyster isn't great. When you stab the oyster and the knife goes in like this, and then you move it around like this, and you rip it around, the whole time your knife is inside that little oyster and you're shredding it to bits and it's gonna be pre-chewed and it's gonna be bitter and kind of nasty. And that's purely the sign of an amateur right there if you've got a scrambled oyster. That stabbing into that part there, that's gonna make it taste really bitter and kind of nasty. So you want to avoid that. Again, get rid of any bits of shells. And, and if you're really driving your knife into the shell or the shell's really flaky, you're gonna to wanna to look for a little bit of shell underneath at that hinge point as well. Now, this little fella here, I got lots of space to get that knife in. I just wiggle it until I feel like I've got some resistance from the shell. And then again, just twist it to pop it open. Cut the top off, wipe the knife, wipe out the bits of shell, cut it off the bottom, make sure it's free done. Sometimes you run into an oyster and it's like a rock. It's a real bear. It's really difficult to get it to open. You get your knife in there and you're reefing on it and you really got to lean on it and it's bending the oyster knife. Well, if you find yourself looking at your oyster knife wondering, wow, that thing's really bending. The next thing that likely will happen is you're going to snap the blade of the oyster. Sometimes a nice thin knife like this is the perfect tool, especially on a lighter weight East Coast oyster. They're not as hard to get into, but if you're on a big hard West Coast oyster, you're not gonna be able to really get in there and get that leverage that you want without snapping the blade. Now the reason I like this knife is because it's really thin, so it gets nice and sharp. So when I do cut the top of the shell off and, and, and cut the bottom off, it really comes out really nice and clean. But sometimes you gotta use the right tool for the job. Enter these big beefy R. Murphy shuckers. It's a little bit thicker, it's a little bit heavier. Uh, you can really lean on it and it's not gonna break somewhat as easy as these other guys. So with this, yeah, you can really get the, shell, get the tip dug in and then you can pop that guy open, no problem. You can lean on it like a bit of a crowbar. It's just not as nimble when you're trying to get in and underneath. The thin skinny blade makes it a lot easier to cut the oyster off. If you're being real particular, you can change your oyster knife halfway through shucking an oyster. If you're a professional, there's no way you're gonna do that. That's ridiculous. If you've got a real big, beefy, bad boy oyster, especially if you're gonna get some real big oysters and you wanna fry them or cook them instead of eating them raw, you might wanna get an oyster knife like this that's got a bit of a curve to it. It's got a fatter spine. This is a really rigid knife. This is like a kitchen pry bar. This thing is awesome. So. You get that curved bit underneath the top shell and you wiggle it in and then you pop it open. That was pretty easy. You just have to be a little bit more gentle when you're getting underneath to remove the oyster from the bottom. So here at Knifeware we've got a few different types of oyster knives you can choose from. We've got long, slender, skinny guys like this and and they're really good for cleanly removing the top and the bottom of the shell and getting into those lighter, thinner oysters. For bigger, harder oysters, we've got a fatter, more robust blade for breaking into that shell. And for the ones that are hard like rocks, we've got these levers here with a little curve to the tip that'll really let you get after a big, nasty shell oyster. What's better to put on a fresh oyster than a little bit of mignonette? Mignonette. Here's something great to put on a fresh oyster. You know, lemon juice is great. Some, some sort of thinner hot sauce, great. All kinds of things are tasty. But a mignonette is a great thing to put on an oyster. It's simple. Shallot, red wine vinegar, pepper. No, not that pepper, this pepper. This is knife skills time. 